All right, go to 2 Timothy this morning. The power of grace. Everybody can see that? I do believe sometimes that the power of grace is uh, not really known. It's not really thought about. It's not really appreciated. It's not really understood. When most people think about power in the Bible, they think about something different. And for you and I, it's going to be hugely important that we understand this thing right here, the power of grace. So a lot of what we said earlier today, this morning, and uh, some of what you heard from Brother Lee, some of this might sound redundant. This came to my mind while I was down in Georgia, and we talked down there on the spiritual conflict, the, the war, the spiritual war. And I'm persuaded that even a lot of preachers and teachers, and don't, don't get me wrong, I don't have everything figured out. I don't, I don't know that they understand where that war really is. Right? It, it's, it's, the, it's the battlefield that goes on here in our minds. It goes on in here. The conflict that we have when we think about flesh. We think about trying to correct things by the law. We think about all those things. And we will go miles and miles and miles to try to find the answers to these, these things that beset us, if you will. And it's all in the power of God's grace. You've got to understand it. Don't be afraid to live in grace, to rest in grace. To just operate in grace, under grace, grace in you. You don't be afraid of it. And what I'm learning, the further we go in this thing, I know some men who really understand it. They're really preaching it and teaching it correctly, I believe, according to scriptures. And there's others that just have to leave some crutches on grace. It's grace, but... It's grace and. No, it's all grace. When Christ sent Paul out, he sent him out with a dispensation of what? Dispensation of grace and law? No, he showed you the law in reference that you couldn't do it. Israel couldn't do it. Man can't do it. And so you needed something. And God gave you what? Grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but you are what? Yeah. What's got dominion over me now? Grace. Why are we so afraid of grace? Well, I think there's multiple reasons. I think preachers and teachers are so afraid if people receive grace, accept grace, and embrace grace, and that nothing, nothing else, that they're afraid they might lose them. Right? You could put just a little bit of something in there to make them feel a need for you. <laughs> I, I want you to be so able to go to this book and see the light of the scripture between you and the Lord and the Spirit of God on your own that you get to the place to where you don't need me for that. Now, not that you wouldn't want to still fellowship with me, that you, know, you turn against me or you leave me or whatever as far as our fellowship, but you understand the book, man, that's refreshing. And, you know, so some of those conversations we had with people in Georgia, you heard people who have come to this truth, they're still growing in the truth, and, and, and they would say things and be like, wow, okay. There was one lady there for, just to tell you how things went, and she walked up and she asked, had I ever heard of Les Feldy? And I was like, yeah, I've heard. But then she started to speak. She started to talk. And you realize right away foundationally she was stable foundationally she knew the word of God she understood where she was in the scripture right what a beautiful thing 
So I want you to look at this this morning. This is going to be very basic, very simple, but very needed. The power of grace. As if there's not any power in grace. This is the way people preach and teach, man. They really do. But I want to show you something in, in the scripture. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. When you get there, we'll start at verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. Where is it at? Okay. So he's telling Timothy to be strong in something. What's he telling him to be strong in? Where is it at? That rings a bell with me right away. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Being justified by faith. Right? We've got it. We've got that peace with God wherein we also have access into that grace wherein we stand. Where is it at, folks? It's in Christ. Can you see this morning that when you embrace grace without any bands attached to it, you're embracing Christ without any bands attached to Him? Can you see that? When you live in grace without any side rails, without any bumper stops, Without any crutches, you're living and you're embracing in Christ everything that Christ is. Anything that you add, anything that you put out there to help support you, what you're saying is, it's the power that's in Christ, the grace that's in Christ, it's not strong enough for you. It's really what you're saying. You, you, you may play it off. You may act like it's not real. You may be like these preachers and teachers out here who are teaching a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You may be one of those guys that, that, that oh yes, it's by grace and it's faith and all this, but let me tell you this. You, you know, you, you, don't, you don't need to put a but on grace. It's all in Christ. See, when you realize that all that Christ has done... When he finished everything that he finished, and he revealed unto the Apostle Paul the dispensation of the grace of God, he is telling every believer out here today, everyone that will, that it, when you believe and you're placed into Christ, you are absolutely 100% done in grace. Amen? But nobody wants it. <laughs> they need something to make them feel like they're on a... On a a weightlifting machine that I've got some weight on me to, you know, push up, push up, push up. Watch what he says. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. When he says commit it to faithful men, he's not talking about the guy that shows up to get the yard cut. He's not talking about the guy that's having a bake sale. He's talking about the guy who has embraced grace and he's strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. The guy that is faithful with the grace message committed to him so that he can teach others also. There's something in the grace message, my friend. It's not, this thing is not denominational. It's not a movement. It's what God is doing today. Amen. You know, people say this all the time. Well, don't you believe God can still do, God can do whatever God chooses to do. But let me tell you the greatest blessing you'll ever have in the Bible when you understand what God is doing. Amen. When you get to where you know what God is doing, and I don't, listen, I'm going to be, I'm going to be gracious about this because we're teaching on the power of grace, right? But I don't need some superficial outward show of my flesh to make me feel secure in Christ. I'm secure in Christ because that's what he made me. Amen? I've learned that when he put me in there, sealed me, raised me up, lifted me up, seated me together with him, I'm secure in Christ. I'm over the justification thing, meaning that I'm not looking for it to be done. I'm not trying to make it to be done. It's done. It's done in Christ. Amen? So now I can build up in this grace and this grace can build up into me that I might do what he's saying here in verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know why most people fall out of so-called churches? Because they're not built up in grace. 
They're built up on a superficial system and somebody comes against them and they get blown about. Amen? If you really want to stand, man, and stand strong, stand in grace, it's in Christ. When somebody comes along and gives you another doctrine that says you've got to do something out of yourself, it's outside of Christ in which you find it, you need to get away. You need to do like Daryl Walter, boogity, 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 get out of there, man. Right? I'm just telling you. I'm telling I'm trying to help you. If I get hit by a truck today, you need to understand something. It's all by grace. It's in Christ Jesus. It, when we say we're grace believers, what is that? Well, I just, I believe in grace. Are you really experiencing God's grace? Are you enjoying God's grace? Are you embracing God's grace? Are you living in God's grace? Are you functioning in God's grace? Have you kicked out everything else and said, I'm just going to rest in Him? Or do you feel like, I just got to have a little something? Right? I, I mean, folks, I'm trying to make a point here this morning. Look at verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masters, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? The husband that labor must first part be a partaker of the fruit. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in what? All things. You know, the spiritual matters of this book, of this Bible that we read, all 66 books, would you consider what was given to the Apostle Paul, it's amazing how the other scripture come together for you, is it not? When you miss what Paul taught about grace, when you miss the dispensation of the grace of God, and you begin to rest the scripture, you begin to twist them to get them to do what you want them to do, everything is a blur and you have no confidence, you have no assurance, you're up one day, you're down one day, you know who... Anybody in here ever went on that salvation uh, roller coaster ride? One day I feel marvelously saved, man, I'm good. And then the next time the preacher preaches something that I didn't do, and now I might not be saved. Anybody go through that? You know, I, I, I don't, I try not to block people on Facebook, but I will unfollow people. Right? I, I, yeah. There's people who come on, and, and salvation has always got to have an evidence of me doing something. No, the evidence of your salvation is that Jesus Christ arose the third day and he sits at the right hand of the Father and he gave this message of grace to the Apostle Paul. My evidence is in Christ. That's where I'm at this morning, spiritually speaking. So men are, I was having some communication with a pastor Saturday night, Friday night. And he said, what I find and what I'm hearing is men who are preaching uh, according to right division, they're preaching it lightly. Yes. I said, yeah, almost as if they're afraid that people might completely depend on grace and nothing else. And he said, yes. And that's really what I'm hearing out of the so-called, a lot of these so-called right division preachers. Now there's some really good ones out there and they get it, man. They know it's all about grace. Then there's others who want to go back and whistle in something from over here in this time pass program, plug it into you because that's going to give you the extra boost. No, man, I've got the power of God's grace. And whether people like my flesh or not, that's between them and the Lord, man. I didn't come to be popular, right? But I, I am going to teach grace. That's what we do here. Grace for today Bible fellowship, right? We, we, we're not a bunch of Heathen, we're teaching what God has said about His grace according to His grace. Look over in uh, Ephesians 2.4. That was just a precursor. Here's the dilemma, and I know, I know where the dilemma's at. And I know why some teach what they teach. See, we are to grow in God's grace. Listen, God's grace does not grow. We grow in God's grace. Right? You, you can't outdo God's grace. You can't improve on God's grace. You can't grow God's grace. You only grow in it. You grow up in it. Right? 
and we've seen the scripture back over in Titus 2.11. It teaches us some stuff, right? But it's also power. Look at, look at the power here in 2.4. Uh, 2.4 of Ephesians. For God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By what are you saved? So what do we have there? We have God's saving grace. See that? According to that passage, is there anything else going to save you? <laughs> no. No, man, it's not. Look at the rest here. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show forth exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through what? So the only thing, folks, that you can add to this grace is your belief that God is right, God is true, everything he said about his grace, everything he said about his son according to the revelation of mystery is absolute Bible fact. It doesn't matter who believes it, who don't believe it. I've got news for you. Let God be true, but every man a liar. God has said it. God has written it down. God has given it to me through a special apostle, a dispensation of his grace. It's saving grace. Amen. Look over at Romans chapter 3. Do you know what's going to build you up and send you out here with confidence and assurance in your heart? It ain't going to be because you showed up today. It ain't going to be because you marked this off of your weekly to-do list. It ain't going to be because you go down here and praying that God will show you some type of a sign. It's not going to be because you go down here and get in some ritual. It's not going to be because you go down here and join your flesh to some feel-good party. It's going to be because you're growing in God's grace and you realize the power of God's grace is everything that you need. And it really bothers me when people get to the place to where they act like you need something more than God's grace in order to be sustained. We've got scripture, folks, to back up what we're saying. Look here in Romans in chapter 3. Chapter 3, look at verse 24. Being justified freely by his what? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There it is again, Timothy. It's in Christ Jesus. What do you have there? You got justifying grace. Well, I'd like to get deeper in the word. You need to get deeper into grace. Right? And a word to help you do that. Look over at Romans chapter 5. Look at 5 and look at 17. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive what? Abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So what do you got there? Abundant grace. I heard a preacher say one time, Grace, 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 that's all y'all teach. Yep. Yeah. Hey, man. Right. Yeah. I'm good with it. Yeah. 520. Moreover, the law entered that offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more what? Abound. abound. Read that verse again. Moreover, the law entered. Why? That the offense, that sin, might abound. Watch this. But wherein sin abounded, what did grace do? It much more abounded. So what do we have there? Abounding grace. Can your sin outbound grace? If it could, grace could have never outbound sin. Amen. I'm afraid of that. Look here at 21. That as sin have reigned unto death, what is the twin of sin in the Bible? Death. Sin has a twin. It's called death. 
When you get saved, that twin is done away. You only have sin now. You no longer have death, spiritually speaking. Meaning my soul salvation. Sin still has a consequence. But I'm not under that penalty anymore. Right? When, when I'm not under the penalty of that sin. I'm still in the presence of sin. I'm not in the penalty of sin. I'm not under that power. It doesn't have dominion over me any longer. I am under grace. Amen? Are y'all with me? You see this grace thing? That as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. What do you have there? Reigning grace. You know what reign means, right? To reign over someone. That's a king, isn't it? Isn't it nice to have grace for a king? Isn't it nice to have the power of God's grace ruling over you today? That's nice, isn't it? Look at Romans 6. Look at 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under the law, but you're under what? Grace. So we have a dominion of grace, if you want to call it that. Right? Not under law, under grace. If you're not under law, why would you practice the law? Because I... Donnie, I, I, I have to do that because, you know, because I need to be this. Or, no, grace will teach you. Grace will teach you to die ungodliness. Where does sin get its power? From the law. By Moses came what? The knowledge of sin. By Christ comes the forgiveness of sin. By Adam, sin entered. Right? So you went from a dispensation of innocence with Adam to a dispensation of law with Moses to a dispensation of grace by Paul. It was given to Paul. See that? Paul's the one that taught you about the forgiveness of sin. Paul's the one that taught you about righteousness doesn't come by the law, but it comes by what? Faith of what Christ did and faith of Christ. Paul's the one that taught you that. Pluck Paul out of the Bible, folks, and what you've got is a law program. A covenant program. If you'll do this, then I'll do that. Paul's the one who teaches you that it's all done. Go to Galatians. Sometimes we hear things for multiple times. We see redundancy. We see repetitive Bible study, whatever. You never know who might be hearing it for the first time. Right? Look at 1.6 Galatians. I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that has called you unto, into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. It sounds to me like the gospel there is a the gospel of grace. See it? Well, what does the word gospel mean? Good news. What's the good news, Donnie? God's grace. And the power of God's grace. Do you not believe that God's grace is powerful enough to save you? God's grace is powerful enough to seal you? God's grace is powerful enough to keep you? God's grace is enough to sustain you? God's grace is enough to get you through anything in this life. God's grace is enough to get you to the next life. Don't you believe all that? That sounds like power to me. Where's it found? In the gospel of Christ. Right? It's the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes it. 
Look over in Ephesians again. Three one for this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, the dispensation of the grace of God. So we have a dispensation of grace. Wonder what that means. God sent Paul to dispense grace, didn't he? Amen. Well, there's always been grace in the Bible. Amen. But there hadn't always been a dispensation of grace in the Bible. And Paul is not in every book of the Bible. You find him at the top of 13 books. Paul the Apostle. Amen. Well, let's just twist that. And let's make Paul say what Peter said. And Peter say what Paul said. And Paul say what Jesus said in his earthly ministry. And let's just act like Paul just became some type of weird 13th apostle to go out and do what God had told the 12 to do. Well, if that's the case, then why did God need Paul? Well, God needed Paul because God had a program that had been kept secret since the world began. And it is the dispensation of the grace of God, how the Jew and Gentile, regardless of who they are, where they are, what they've done can be saved by God's grace through faith. Amen? Amen. Believe it or not, that's what you've got. Go back and look at Ephesians in chapter 1. Look at verse 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, where He had made us accepted in the Beloved. What do you see there? The glory of His grace. You know, man will give you some cheap grace. Take it back as soon as you offend Him. Right? Anybody been there and done that? Look at verse 7. And whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the what? Riches of his grace. Look at that. Is this getting stronger as you go or not? Let me ask you this question. So far, what he told Timothy in 2 Timothy when we started out, he told him to be strong, right? In the grace of God, right? Found in Jesus Christ, right? So far, and what we've seen in this grace, is this about a church building, a denomination, a movement? What do you find in this grace? It's saving grace, justifying grace, abundant grace, abounding grace, reigning grace, dominion of grace, gospel of grace, dispensation of grace, glory of His grace, riches of His grace. It's all about Jesus Christ. Can you not see grace as a person? It's Christ and it's all that He had completed and finished on the cross for you. It's what God had planned for you before the world was. But now it's made it manifest through the preaching of the Apostle Paul. And what's the world doing? Shoving it aside, man. They don't want nothing to do with it. And it's completely free. I know it's free. And I know it's works free as far as salvation goes. But I said it the last time we were here. Good grace should bring about good works. But guess what? If good works don't follow, that don't have anything to do with my grace. That just means I'm rotten. See, some people believe when they got saved, they got saved on the outside. Your flesh is still no good. Even after being saved, everything that's good about you is in the man, Jesus Christ. That's where your good comes from. If you brag on anything, you boast on anything, it better be about Him. Can you see that? Look at 2 Corinthians with me. Second Corinthians, look at chapter 12. Verse 
Look at verse 7. We'll start there. <clears throat> and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. What do we see in that verse? Sufficient grace. Well, what did Christ instruct Paul to do right there? Somebody. Paul, I'm not removing your problem. Paul, I'm not taking away the thorn that's in thy flesh. Guess what, big boy? Rest in my grace. It's sufficient. Well, if it was sufficient for my apostle... It's sufficient for me. Amen. I just need a little religion, Donnie. I'd love to feel that flesh tingle. You know what makes me tingle? God's grace. You know, one brother said, What gets you up every day? My bladder. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you what, it's God's grace. What keeps you going? God's grace. What makes you want to go do something? God's grace. What works in you? God's grace. Amen? All this, this teaching and preaching that I'm hearing, when I came to this thing, I was hearing some good Bible teachers and preachers teaching on God's grace and painting the picture all about Christ. And now I believe I'm hearing about men. I believe I'm hearing, I'm the head duck. Get behind me and start to quack. Man, Paul said in me first. Follow me as I follow Christ. Be your followers of God. What are we going to do? Are we going to follow a man? Don't follow me. Follow the scripture. When I get off track, tell me I'm off track. If I don't get back on track, find you another track. That's what I'd do. I ain't going to tell you to do anything I wouldn't do. I come up here and start preaching and teaching some phony stuff. Tell me I'm preaching phony stuff. When I don't correct it the second Sunday, get up and leave. Whatever you got, get in the car and go, man. Right? Don't give me a break. If I'm not in this book and I'm not telling you it's all about Jesus Christ and His grace and all that He paid for, all that He accomplished by His blood, His death, His burial, His resurrection, His power to know all things, His power that He put in the Apostle Paul, if I'm not teaching and preaching, get rid of me. Right? Now that's easier to do with some of these guys on YouTube and radio. Bang. Get rid of some of them. Right? Look over at 2 Corinthians in chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Chapter 4, 2 Corinthians. Now I will say this. This is wonderful. And you want to know why a lot of people don't show grace? Because they don't have this power of God's grace working in them. That's why they don't show grace. I have no desire to come up here and hold other men up that are teaching right division, whatever they're teaching, according to right division, and just cut their heads off to try to make me look good. I have no desire to do that. Right? We don't all agree on every principle and every point of doctrine, and we're not going to because we're all in flesh, and none of us have it all figured out. But I'm not going to come up here and make this a place to where we shoot the guy that we don't agree with. We don't agree with him. We're going to pray for him. And it may come a day that we might agree with him. Right? We might get corrected on something. Look here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. 
But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience and the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Verse 5 is what you see. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants of Jesus Christ. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Never are we to claim that it's in us. Never are we to claim that we are something. We ought to always point our finger to what Jesus Christ has done. Always point people to the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, the justifying grace of Jesus Christ, the abundant grace of Jesus Christ, the abounding grace of Jesus Christ, the reigning grace of Jesus Christ, the dominion of grace, the gospel of grace, the dispensation of grace, the glory of His grace, the riches of His grace, and the sufficiency of His grace. Always, 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 what do you get accomplished when you do that? It's all in Jesus. Where would the world be right now, speaking of the church, if it was all about Jesus and man had that knowledge? And man was preaching according to that knowledge. You wouldn't have the mess that you have. Fourteen different ways to get saved. And none of them are valid. Amen. Oh me. I'm telling you, man. This is a simple teaching, but it's needed. There are some men who need to sit down... I'm not just pointing my finger at them. My need to sit down and reassess. What are you in this for? Are you being driven by God's grace? Are you working from the motive of God's grace? Or are you working from the motive of self? And that's a very easy thing to do. I've thought about my religious life in closing. I thought about my religious life unknowingly, because pride is so subtle. When I would go in to those religious institutions, I was truly there for me. I see that clearly now because I'm away from it. See, in the storm, all you see is the storm. When you come outside the storm, you can look back and see all the damage that's been done. You can assess things. Now I look back and I assess where I was. And I realize there was a lot of me in that garbage. Now I realize it's all Christ. Until the day I die or to the day I fly, I want it to be all about Jesus. I want it to be about nobody but Jesus. Not about me, not about you, not about some preacher, some pastor, some teacher. All about Jesus. And all I'm going to do until the day I'm out of here is point people to Jesus, 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 Jesus. The power of His grace. One last verse. And leaving today. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Let me ask you this question before we read this verse. The work that Jesus Christ started in you was a work of what? Keep that in mind as we read this verse. Let's start at verse 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you, and peace, grace and peace go together, don't they? From God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel, that's the gospel of grace, from the first day unto now, watch this, being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. That gracious work that he began in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I tell you, grace does the work? Grace has done the work. 
all about him, man. That's just too easy. Well, if it's that easy, sign up for it. It'll work for you too. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful, so thankful for this day, another day of life, another day of your grace, another day of your long suffering. We're so thankful for the blood, for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who paid our way, Lord. We thank you for that gospel. How did he die for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day? By simple faith, God, if we would just believe that gospel, believe what you have said, trust your Son and nothing else for our salvation, our justification. Lord, the work is done and completed, and we too are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. We give him all the praise, thanks, honor, glory, and everyone did say, Amen.